In 1984, an English singer-songwriter from the 1970s re-emerged with a new look, a new sound, proving herself quite adept at the sonic art of the modern age. I am talking about Claire Hamill, and from her 1984 comeback album, Touch Paper, the track Denmark. <laughs> Okay, already, um, I, I, comparisons to Jane Seabury are coming to mind. Um, I love the martial precision of this so far, and of course the, like, feminine vocals atop. I love those uh, very, very studio-handed, multi-tracked vocals, um, and the uh, somewhat uh, Celt tinge, kind of like modern Celt, like a clanade, like what they were doing around this time. Yeah, she's definitely become a woman now, much more seductive, much more confidence, nuance, and range to her voice. Uh, a, a far cry from the barely uh, grown, like, well, very young woman. Like, I, she was like 17 when she put out her first album in 1971. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 the more timid, kind of like bookworm, introspective, young, like, woman, girl, like, uh, of that era. Yeah, I love the uh, kind of airy breathiness that she's putting into these vocals, as, as well as the kind of demure quality. of like a vocalist this time around uh like i swear that the main element as far as the sound goes that the main sonic element the main instrument here really is her vocals i love that gated uh bass drum that sustain it has. All the while though those backup vocals provide such sonic thickness to it. It's almost like they're they're uh, filling in uh, for a synth string. Kind of like taking the uh, 10 cc art of like um, like synthetic harmonies to a new level. And some a bit of acoustic mixing mixing in with uh, the digitized sounds. I dream of the railway that runs across France. And I hear that airy, breathy, kind of seductive sigh she's putting into some of these syllables. And then the way she flares up so elegantly, so lith. I love that tinkly sound over the uh, martial precision. Those those background vocals they they kind of just like beam in almost like they're I I they're probably like sampled and being played like on a keyboard or something the the the, the control to them like the way they kind of like come in disappear like fade in. Um, Sound-wise, it's almost like a, this sounds like it could have been produced by Trevor Horn. Um, I don't, I don't think no. It's produced by her and, and Andy Stennett, but I'm hearing 
uh, very much kind of that art of noise type of sound here. Um, there, there's actually uh, some other moments on the album where she kind of goes into similar like avant-garde digital territory. <laughs> Right there, -na 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 that the angularity of that. Touch um, the lyrics to this, uh, believe it or not, are available online. He's leaving for Denmark in a few days, and I don't know when he's coming home. He's leaving. Uh, once again, and I don't think he's traveling alone. Uh, hear me call, hear me cry, hear me shout at the sky. Love is just a box of tricks. Nothing could be safer. Light the touch paper. Ah, yeah. Uh, one of those uh, examples where um, there's no title track, but the album title is taken from a song lyric. Yeah. Um, there's nothing in Denmark, there's fields and there's woods, but there's someone that he wants to see. So this, this guy that she's talking about is going off to Denmark to have a, to meet some, some lover, some, some tristes on, yeah, um, and leaving her behind, or leaving her temporarily anyway to, he's too timing with a woman in Denmark. Um, I'm piecing together the thought that, the, thought that he could do this kind of hurting to me hear me call hear me cry hear me shout at the sky yeah that's the part that's what she says during the, the that real kind of melodic dip that she goes into um yeah love is just a box of tricks nothing could be safer like the touch paper love is just a box of tricks that's an interesting line that's that, that's a pretty loaded line um Oh, passion is short-lived and fashion is sacred. And faces forgotten in time. Wow. That almost sounds like a pull quote. Fashion is sacred. And faces forgotten in time. I, passion is short-lived and fashion. Yeah. Very much, that, that line seems very much of its time, too. I'll light a candle and I'll paint a portrait and I will forget you were mine. I dream of the railway that runs across France and my friend in Paris and Rome. He's leaving for Denmark in a few days and I don't know when he's coming home. Oh, she said, and my friends in Paris and Rome. Yeah. Different people. Yeah. Hear me call, hear me cry, hear me shout at the sky. Love is just a box of tricks. Nothing could be safer. Light the touch paper. That, that seems like cool. the touch paper. Huh. Yeah. Um, and oh, funny enough, the, the uh, site also has uh, these lyrics in uh, what appears to be Polish. Yeah. Um, on this album, we have got Claire Hamill is credited with guitar and vocals. I'm wondering if those leads are. I, I'm thinking she played the acoustic plucking that we were hearing, uh, but not the lead licks that we were. Uh, let's see. And uh, her main collaborator on this is one Andy Stennett, yeah, who plays a keyboards, synthesizer, and, and co produced the album. <laughs> And I know there's got to be more credits than that, but that's all that's being listed on the several Discogs entries that are coming up. Yeah, uh, Denmark by Claire Hamill, the 70s singer-songwriter from England turned modern uh, art rocker of the mid to late 1980s, yeah. Um, yeah, she put out four albums between 1971 and 1975 and then disappeared for until the end of the decade when she appeared on Steve Howe's second solo album, the Steve Howe album, 
doing vocals on like one or two tracks and then around 1981 or so she took up like a year-long gig with uh, Wishbone Ash um, I guess as their tour as a touring vocalist for them backup vocalist or something and I um, and uh, and around that time, she put out a single in 1980, and then another in 83 that I guess pretty much revealed the new look, new sound, Clara Hamill. Yeah, there's a video for the song online, too, um, and she's uh, looking quite good in it. She's quite the performer, it turns out, yeah. Um, the video for 24 Hours in Tulsa, it's actually a cover song. Um, this next song, she originally cut as a 7-inch in 1980, and while I haven't heard that version yet, here's the version that she cuts in 1984 for Touch Paper, the track First Night in New York. <laughs> got some of that kind of booming kind of sustained sound going on this is my first night in new york darling just lie there please don't talk yeah there's i, I think uh, quite a few of these tracks have more of kind of that adult vibe the newly kind of the more sexually confident more demure like grown woman as opposed well i've made the comparisons enough already in my veins Drawn by the cool Manhattan rain Let's just say that back in the early 70s, she didn't give off this vibe, but you, you didn't, you wouldn't have suspected that she would have gone in this direction. You, she, she was more kind of like the bookworm type, the, the, the kind of like librarian type girl. This is my first night in New York Outside I hear the green sidewalk I smell the city's autumn yeah, very poetic imagery, like um, like uh, making uh, comparisons, like like metaphor, city observation metaphors for kind of the feelings that are going through her uh, in relation to someone. Out there in my New York tonight. A time when New York was actually a place to see and be seen, a place you wanted to visit. This is my first night in LA. I knew I'd make it here someday. Now she's in LA. Tomorrow I'll complete the dream and hire us both for the fretless space. Oh, hear that, that, that kind of luminous rising synth uh, behind her that kind of peaked and then it kind of like turned into this kind of other sound, this dum, 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 like Once again, very artful, like studio arranged um, placement of harmonies, of like controlled harmonies and such. Like, like what I meant by that is like tape controlled, knob uh, adjusted. I love that this period where we we're, we've really entered the the period now where uh, ballads um, or like mid tempo mood numbers would have that kind of strident element in places, kind of owing to like hard rock, um, which just goes to show how integrated certain elements of hard rock can become. That 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 like a that like. A track kind of like well outside that that area could invoke it in, in certain moments. Yeah, she's getting a bit sassier now, a bit. Her voice has changed here. She 
just went into another language? I love that uh, counterpoint between that bass, that 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 fretless bass, and the um, harmonic note it hits, and the um, luminous synth. Basically, uh, an A minor to F progression. Where is the romance of this week? My future's looking very bleak. Oh, I love that the airiness that she gives that line. My future's looking very bleak. Please say you'll call me the day. The things we should cut fade away. It makes me wonder uh, what kind of transformation she went, like how gradual or, or th this transformation between like 1975 to 1984. Uh, <laughs> it's like, did she just like wake up one day and decide she wanted to be more kind of the sultry type? <laughs> or did it just kind of, or was, or was she kind of holding this, was there a, a part of this in her back, say, in the early 70s, that she was just too shy about at the time, due to her age? Hear that really tight hi-hat? Some electric piano. Um, influence wise, um, I would say the Mick Karn Japan, the, the Mick Karn side of Japan is, is rather obvious of like tin drum titles that. In, in certain aspects, I'm, I'm also hearing, heck, there, there are parts of this album that, that um, I think mildly kind of flirt with like Cocktoo Twins territory. And then of course the, the obvious, like the, the um, Laurie Anderson, uh, Jane Seabury, and uh, yeah, Trevor Horn. Um, Somewhat, uh, somewhat presaging uh, the following year's uh, propaganda. those fading kind of seductive size of the chorus. And I love it when artists, you know, are able to adapt and, and uh, make good use of changing technology, changing styles, and, and find, kind of reinvigorate their own, jumpstart themselves and, and um, you know, find good use of, of some of the newer ideas that are out there and make them their own. Um, as Clara Hamill did after, um, on her first album in nine years, the 1984 release, uh, Touch Paper, which um, kicks, kicked off a whole new phase in her career. Yeah, she would release uh, two further albums and an EP over the next four years. And... Uh, on Coda Records, and uh, yeah, gained some new newfound uh, renown during this time period. Uh, this this um, yeah yes. Uh, back in the seventies, let's see, in seventy one, seventy two, she released two albums on Island, and then in seventy four, seventy five, she released two albums on Conk, the label headed by Ray Davies. Um, 
And uh, one of her pieces from the mid '80s, anyway, uh, became was used by the BBC on some program. I'm not sure which one though. Anyway, yeah, uh, Claire Hamill, uh, uh, an artist of quite uh, of, of range, and um, I hesitate to say singer songwriter because that term kind of connotates the kind of music that she was doing back in the '70s. Um, at, at this point, I would just say musician, vocalist, producer, um, art pop. You know. Anyway. For more rubies and sapphires from the catalog of Claire Hamill, see the directory of albums by English C artists linked in the description below. Like, subscribe, and follow me on social media, and leave a comment if there are any observations you have about the two tracks we just heard, the layers, the uh, production techniques that were employed, the harmonies, uh, the vocals, the lyrics. And until next time, this is Aragon, the world's most ear travel trimax most, signing off.